we had a, a very nice, diverse group. Uh, we had uh, representatives from uh, all sides uh, of the partnership, and from from the the nation, the nation in total. We had Washington and Florida and Texas and and uh, Louisiana and and Oklahoma and and uh, we also had uh, some of the uh, uh, national folks who are who are working with uh, with us in partnership. Uh, and so it was a very good and very diverse group. And so uh, I, it, it's always, a, as, as any kind of focus group, it's always hard to um, uh, summarize uh, the kind of discussion. But in, in some aspect, of the, the way that I would want to, to summarize it is that we, in a way, uh, uh, had a, had a uh, discussion about uh, the various ends of, of the problem and kind of a dichotomy uh, about either losing uh, uh, the federal funds and the issues related to uh, the problems of, of uh, the 4E penetration, the number of children who are eligible for AFDC and, and the use of that as, as a methodology for uh, uh, drawing in the federal funds and the cost share with the universities and and the other end, where some states are, are trying to do more with their 4E program and draw in more fe uh, federal uh, 4E dollars by combining and, and uh, uh, doing more together with uh, the university uh, in the state in terms of combining training, uh, development of new professions within professionals within the uh, uh, child welfare system. Uh, the the Biggest issues uh, that that all of us are are facing in in all of our work in human services is what's going to happen on the national level. There's all the discussions about what uh, uh, is going to happen with the federal funds. Are they going to become uh, block grants? Are they going to remain entitlements? Uh, how how will 4E funding be affected? All the uh, uh, deficit reduction issues that that uh, are pouring out of, out of Washington and the concerns uh, related uh, to uh, uh, all of the, the changes that, that are occurring nationally, that we have to try to anticipate as states, uh, keep, our, uh, keep our focus on what we're doing in terms of, um, uh, in terms of, of our, our work with new people coming into the field of child welfare through the bachelors in social work or new folks getting a master's in social work and trying to get them committed to, to child welfare work as well as the folks already uh, uh, out there in the field uh, working hard who want to come back and, and improve their skills, uh, improve their knowledge by coming back and getting the masters in social work uh, and, and us as universities supporting them. To me, the discussion that we had was, was truly about how do we, how do we maintain the, the partnership that e exists. And the partnership is not just between the universities and the state, but it's also all the way to the federal level. It's, it is a partnership that, that involves uh, a multitude of people trying to make sure that, that we can improve and professionalize the child welfare uh, services across across this nation. Uh, the focus uh, has, a, and one of the things I, I like about celebrating uh, the Children's Bureau 100 years uh, is, is what the focus that it, that it brings upon uh, the, this commitment uh, to improving our services and improving our functions, uh, not only uh, within our universities, but also within within each of the states and within this nation, um, our our discussion was mainly about the, the some of the fears that federal funds uh, uh, might uh, be lost because of of uh, changes to try to deal with the uh, the entitlement programs that that we've all heard discussions about. To Washington uh, State uh, talking about how they're expanding their program and bringing in. Uh, some of the um, uh, uh, state employees into universities uh, and, and having them 
become part of the university community and part of the training commitment to ongoing staff as well as new people coming into the program. Uh, and so what we ended up uh, trying to focus on in terms of uh, then after our discussion getting back to new needed and next, in new uh, we talked about the broader partnership with the state uh, and, and the federal uh, component uh, to leverage more dollars, whether we're leveraging those, those dollars through, through changes in 4E uh, regulations and trying to bring them up to date in, in, in terms of current, or whether we're going to have to deal with the issue of, of uh, the entitlement program becoming a block program, and how do we advocate and, and support uh, for uh, continuation of these kinds of training, administrative grants versus service uh, uh, needs that are in the community. So we need that, that uh, uh, continuation and strengthening of the broader partnership between the universities, the state uh, government, and, and our federal part partners to leverage these kinds of dollars. Um, uh, and one of the ways that, that uh, we talked about new, new activities going on was that the Washington State is in, in the process of, of combining not only their new development uh, in new education through the universities, but also their ongoing training uh, in, in, a, in a more centralized way with the, the universities that are across uh, uni uh, Washington. So as you have a chance, you can talk with the, the folks from Washington and some of the activities that they're involved in. Yes. Thank you. And, and the opposite uh, of what we were, how we got started on this, the concern about the federal was the, the representatives that are here from Florida and their concern and issues related to the, to the ending of their program because of, of uh, decisions and, and issues in, in uh, Florida related to this uh, general revenue that's available and that is uh, used uh, with the university. So, so also as as you're networking, also network with, with uh, Florida, network with Washington, with each other about ways of trying to address some of the issues from both perspective. Uh, what, is, what is needed is uh, uh, advocates uh, uh, at the federal level. We also uh, need to gather data that benefits the program. And you'll be hearing uh, in just a moment from Dr. DeYoung about what is occurring, not only what has occurred in, within our state, but also what is occurring nationally to try to improve uh, our, not only our understanding of the, the successes uh, and, and just the, the quantitative numbers related to these programs around the nation, but also the qualitative and successful outcomes that are, that are part of uh, uh, showing and demonstrating that these funds are not only necessary and needed, but they also are, are providing, providing us with significant outcome that improve the professionalization of, of child welfare services. So, so needed is also the gathering the data, data that will benefit the programs. And some of the next steps that, that we talked about uh, very briefly was that uh, we need to, need to all support that, that research and evaluation uh, uh, component uh, at your state level and at the national level. And we need to look at what systematic changes do we really want? Do we want changes in, in the federal regulations related to the 4E? Do we want simply that, which to, might be, look like doing away with um, uh, uh, the, the 4E uh, tie to the 1996 uh, 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 income level and, and eliminate that so that we can have more children eligible for AFDC if we bring it current in terms of inflation uh, uh, rate uh, to changes in the 
that 75% match for training and 50% match for administration? Do we need simple changes like that? Or do we need broader system systemic changes that really will keep focus not only on the service needs, but also on the training and administrative uh, issues? So those were the, uh, in, a, in a quick way, the, the new needed and next steps uh, in the partnership area. Dr. Leung, would you like to be next? Well, thank you very much. Um, we have a, my name is Patrick Leung. I uh, co-chair the evaluation committee of the Texas uh, Title IV-E uh, Roundtable Evaluation. Um, I'm from the University of Houston. Uh, I have a PowerPoint on my left. Uh, I, I'm not going through the PowerPoint, but what I'd like to do is that uh, to pose uh, the re uh, research question that we had. Um, basically, what we would like to do is to create a uh, project in the state of Texas uh, in terms of looking into the database from all 14 universities together to identify the variable that might contribute to Title IV E. Uh, now, even though I mentioned the state of Texas, uh, in the meeting that we have uh, in evaluation, uh, there's another level, the multi-state level. There's a session uh, tomorrow uh, morning at 8.30. Uh, Helen and also, Helen, can you raise your hand? And also Sharon. Uh, they are from the state of New York and the state of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, they will be the co-presenters along with me to identify the uh, multi-state study. Uh, there's something going on. Uh, so I'm a small potato in Texas uh, to contribute uh, to that big potato. All right. So, but uh, this is a building uh, block. Uh, so we work together to make this as a national study. Uh, what uh, in the state of Texas we are uh, proposing is that um, we identify three main goals. To create a centralized database for all P2007 Title IV graduate information. In the state of Texas, uh, they only had data up to uh, 2007 and after. But our Title IV went back to the 90s. So what happened to those graduates? We don't know. So we try to create a database that we can combine them. Secondly, we want to summarize the data to get a clear picture of the Title IV graduates, their career path. What happened to them after they graduate? What happened to them after they left CPS? Where are they? And we also want to gain information concerning turnover. There was a very good discussion that we had um, about turnover and barriers to retention to this worker within the tex state of Texas and other states as well. So based on that, um, we uh, identify uh, these research questions. Number one. What was the average length of the time for Title IV students to successfully complete their MSW degrees, uh, as well as BSW as well? Where are Title IV graduates currently employed? What percentage of Title IV graduates have been promoted since graduation? Okay. Now, in the state of Texas, it's very challenging. Uh, sometimes when you get an, an MSW as a worker, you don't get a raise. But if you're not uh, MSW, uh, you're not uh, employees, okay? And then when you earn an MSW, when you first start, you get a raise more than those who are currently employed. Okay, it's, it's very challenging. So promotion is actually a good incentive for those who have, the who has a degree. Of the Title IV graduate who had worked for CPS, what percentage have transferred to other area of the FPS? We, uh, I will mention later, we have a discussion on that. The, what's the definition, basically? Turnover is not just uh, uh, people who terminated, who people who left. It's people who transfer from one unit to another unit, but they are still with, uh, within uh, child welfare. Are we considering that as turnover as negative or, or, or positive? So we have a, a very good discussion about that. The other question we had was that did they complete their past graduate service requirement? That means did they uh, finish uh, the commitment to work there for four years, uh, or depending on the state. If not, what were the reasons for non-completion? What is the overall turnover rate for Title IV E uh, within DFPS? Are uh, Title IV E graduates who are no longer within DFPS still working in the field of child welfare? So those are the basic questions based on what uh, we uh, just met, and. After this question, we generate ideas. Uh, I, that's why we're here. The first idea was that, well, there's a difference between rural and urban. It appears that uh, rural worker stayed there 
the turnover is much less uh, because they stick together, okay? While in the urban, they are different. The turnover could be different. So are there any differences in the database between rural and uh, 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 urban? We also discussed about for those who work there longer, um, they are less likely to turn over because this is something they uh, want to do. Um, we also discussed the difference between uh, turnover, transfer, uh, as well as people uh, who uh, retention there. Uh, sometimes, sometimes turnover or transfer is good because when people work there uh, for a while, they get burned out. So if you go to another unit or another, uh, uh, I would call this system, uh, like the state of Texas, we have the uh, adult protection, which is under the state Texas Department of uh, Family Pac uh, Protection, uh, elder, okay, uh, as well as CPS. So when someone who uh, turn over, that might be positive, so that they don't get burned out. Some uh, we had discussion within CPS. We have multiple units there, and also administrative. And when you turn over to s the administration, that might be a different thing. Uh, we also discussed. Uh, someone who has been a practitioner for CPS for uh, many years and they turn over and they went to become a professor like me, okay? Is it bad? Uh, in child welfare, that is positive. So turnover doesn't mean negative. So I think we have a wonderful information after this uh, discussion. Also, we discussed about uh, turnover. Well, there are many states that have privatization. Okay, when people from CPS they move to uh, private uh, sectors, but they are still working as CPS, the role as CPS, except they get a contract and they're workers, but they don't get paid from the state, but they get paid from the contractor, but they are still doing CPS. That is positive rather than negative. Uh, it's not turnover, okay? But they are basically turning over from the state and then going to privatize agency. And the other uh, question that we had was, how do we track um, the one who left? It's very interesting. So I would yet to hear from uh, uh, the next session, how do we know after they left, where did it go? If they still remain in child welfare, that is fine, right? Uh, so leaving doesn't mean it's bad. So we have a very good discussion. Um, we also discussed how to uh, share information with policy maker to educate them about retention. Uh, lawmakers need to know uh, turnover sometimes is not a negative thing. Sometimes it can be positive because they uh, need to do something differently uh, as well. We also discussed about long-term outcome, okay? Uh, comparing uh, 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 people who graduated um, they might move to supervisor position rather than a direct practitioner. So that means that it's really helpful. And we also talk about short term, that means uh, payback. So th for those who are Title IV, uh, what percentage they're paying back, okay? Or what percentage that they make the commitment. Uh, we didn't like the term turnover. We would like to say, well, maybe we should just say leave us those who left, leave us, because turnover sounds negative. Leave us can lead to something that can be uh, very positive. Uh, they go to private sector, so they leave us. Um, we also discuss um, uh, what are the uh, reasons that they stay, rather than finding out what are the reasons they left. For those who stay, that maintain some variables there, that they they want to stay there. Why? So this is a very uh, good uh, study. Um, we also want to study comparing uh, Title IV -E versus non-Title IV -E differences in terms of turnover. Um, we, we have so much information. I didn't even think about the four questions Nancy asked me to do. What's new? What's new? Uh, what's next? What's the, what's the next step? Those kind of things. But we capture conceptually, okay? I hope you pardon me. But finally, uh, we, we, we asked a question um, about the experiences in Florida. I know that someone uh, on the list serve, you know that Florida already terminated their uh, Title IV program. It sounds very scary. So in other states, how are we going to handle these issues? 
So one thing we mentioned is that if we gather data about the impact of Title 4E has had on child welfare, on children, on the state, when this issue came up, comes up for the other states uh, about whether Title 4E is needed, we have the hard data, we have the report, we can lobby from all universities together. This is needed. So that's something that energized our group to move forward. What should be done next to address funding? We need the money because we have demonstrated positive impact on the children, on the state, and on the student, and on the faculty as well. So with that, I just want to leave here. I just want to ask uh, my group, uh, do you have anything that I left out that I did not report? Um, I'm very happy to uh, add to it. Anything else? With that, I want to thank you for the group because they gave so much information. It's so uh, 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 helpful as well as a, a, a very good discussion. So with that, I want to turn over to the next presenter, um, which is uh, curriculum. Uh, Monit and Martha. Martha, thank you very much. Uh, Martha and I led the group, and we have over 50 people in this group. And thank you very much for attending. And this is a first time that we have the curriculum and feel both coming together as one group. Let's celebrate! <laughs> And what, what we discussed, um, uh, although we put it very briefly here, I think that we have a very detailed as well as a fruitful discussion. So um, what's new? We, we talk about a mentoring program uh, basically led by alumni and students and find it to be successful. Wanted us to talk about new electives that are child welfare focused but focusing also on technology and emotional, in, uh, emotional intelligence. Um, Trauma-informed practice has been the key in many of the courses that we have seen so far, so we would like us to focus on that um, and looking at what we need to do next. And uh, we, I, I gave uh, everybody in this group a CD uh, with the case vignette that uh, developed many years ago in our round table, and now we have a second edition. So if you have not got a copy of it, I still have a few copies at the U University of Houston booth outside. Uh, so go to that table and request a copy. So uh, please take one only, okay? We only have limited supply for this round. But if you would like to have it, if you didn't get it, email me. Um, also another thing is how to partner with your state agency as well as with other agencies for training purposes so that we can build good relationships. Um, important the network. Networking, we talk in detail, so um, that's new. What is needed? Would you like to talk about what's needed? We talked a lot about um, the need to develop good field placements, especially um, in this economic situation with turnover, developing partnerships um, with agencies to provide good supervision to our students. We also talked again about the importance of um, developing more trauma-informed courses and infusing that into the curriculum. Uh, we talked about focusing on technology issues, issues and how they can be used in training. Um, Melissa McAllister, will you raise your hand if she's in here? Um, she must have left, but she is doing some work with emotional intelligence um, and looking at that with um, students in child welfare, and that was really interesting. We also talked about the need to share more mentoring information and also working on social justice infused content into field and coursework. Okay, the, the last thing is what's next, which is the most exciting aspect, okay? So let's look at new leaders, okay? So Martha and I probably will still be, be in the background, but we have a new group, newly created group headed by Melissa from Ohio. So. Um, and I'm very pleased that you know we have someone who just raised their hand and said that um, um, she wanted to uh, be involved actively. So we have another core group just formed um, to plan activities for the year. We uh, in the group, one of the suggestions is we shouldn't be just wait until today, next year. <laughs> we should be doing something ongoing. So. Uh, the focus would be on trauma-focused uh, practice courses, course development, or field 
development in trauma-related uh, subjects, use of technology in the curriculum, particularly related to the emotional uh, intelligence uh, aspect, and uh, also what social workers can do in advocacy work uh, if Title IV-E no longer exists in terms of funding educational programs. Well, which is a sad subject, but as social worker, we are very, very much involved in many different aspects, so we would like us to plan ahead. So this is uh, another thing that we talk about is the listserv, and I'm in charge of the regional listserv, and Georgia is in charge of the national listserv. If you are not in any of the listserv, if you have not received any of the Title IV-E matrix, um, the payback matrix update from me, that means you are not on my listserv. <laughs> so please email me with your email address and I could add you in. I just log on and if you just send me a little slip with your name and, and email address, I can add you in very quickly today, okay? <laughs> and uh, our Title IV-E website has been uh, transported to all to the University of Houston now. Uh, in the past, we have two websites. One is regional, one is state, uh, uh, only for the state of Texas. And now we have only one uh, Title IV-E website um, uh, si uh, situated at University of Houston. And we have lots of resources for your training purposes and all that. So do go there and visit, okay? So if you don't see, if you can remember the, the long link, just go to uh, um, www.uh.edu um, backslash social work and you can find uh, in the subject uh, Title IV-E and we have a Title IV-E website there. And most recently we have a survey, it's called Fathering Behavior Survey. Uh, if you go onto this, this website you can see that and what we wanted to do is really to look at fathers, you know, not only mothers, you know, a lot of time we disproportionately thinking that the mothers were the abusers and we do have fathers, you know, being abusers as well. So we would like to see if we can look at the fathering behavior. So if you, if you know of anybody wanted to fill out a survey about, you know, their partner, mothers are welcome too. So this is a survey for uh, surveying both mother and father regarding fathering behavior. Uh, again, CD is on the table. Finally, this is the list, and I hope that I got, uh, Martha gave me all the names that just submitted to be the cur uh, curriculum field committee members for this coming year. So let's look at them. Okay, so Melissa is our chair, and the members are here. We have Shish Taylor, are you here? All right, uh, Lee. Can, can sure. Lee Allen. Uh, Chantel Francis. Tyra Mercadel, Gloria Washington, James Selena Mitchell, James Selena <laughs> Mitchell, it's one word, right? We'll fix that. Uh, Karen Cagle, Elise Fulmore, and Diane Calloway Graham. Thank you to everybody who volunteered. Thank you. And thank you to all for participating. I'd like to open up the floor for questions, comments. What's next, folks? What should we do? Should we repeat this next year? Was this helpful to have this beginning session before the conference begins? Okay. Then I want to give you your follow-up instructions or lunch on your own and be back at 1.30 for your keynote, but stay connected throughout the conference and after the conference. The emails will be available, the website will be available. Um, let's stay connected so that we can continue to move the agenda forward to protect the children and families of our nation. Thank you again for your work.